welcome the Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, who started this very task force. So, Commissioner, thank you for being here for your live appearance on the Pixel Morning News. Good to see you. It's my pleasure. Thank you. Let me begin first and foremost, Commissioner, with the surveillance video that was released of this arrest. We see the suspect walking down Fifth Avenue. Take us that moment, Commissioner, and why it was that very moment that you decided to move in. So there were some some concerns. Uh, you know, the case was in the grand jury. Uh, we had to wait for the 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 indictment for it, but uh, we were we were concerned about some leaks and it, it getting out. And if it gets out and it gets to his attention, uh, we, now it, it makes the investigation a, a whole lot more difficult. So uh, after confirming my partner Ray Tierney and uh, uh, discussing that this is something that we should move in uh, right away, we we chose to catch him at work and wait for him to come out and, and grab him right away. You got him right near his job yep. in Midtown yeah. Manhattan. I think it was near 35th Street, yeah. not far from Penn Station. Mm -hmm. You know, I want to ask you about starting the task force. That made a really big difference. Mm -hmm. You came to the Suffolk Police Commissioner's Office the end of 2021. You held a press conference almost immediately. Yeah. What difference did that task force make? It, it, it made a lot, but the one thing I, I do want to share is uh, it's not about me creating the task force. I want to kind of get away from that. Uh, I want to talk about the men and the women that were part of the task force mm -hmm. and, and the great work that they did under uh, Detective Lieutenant uh, Kevin Byra. Uh, you know, I, when I first got into the position of, of being police commissioner, uh, I wanted to make sure that this was the right guy for the spot. And I, I brought him into the office, and me being a former chief of department and, and running ComStat meetings, uh, I asked a lot of questions. Mm. You know, are, are, we, are we looking at jail calls? Are we debriefing prisoners? Um, are we uh, looking at uh, a host of other things that could possibly lead us in the right direction? And uh, a three-hour meeting, the man did not look at a piece of paper. Right. So he, he knew, knew it in his he head. Knew, yeah. he knew, you know, he, I got to get specific about one thing, mm -hmm. the Chevy Avalanche. Mm -hmm. That made the difference here. And your team re-interviewed a witness from early in the case, and that second interview made all the difference. What details did he give you? I think he even gave you a description of the suspect. Yeah, so uh, one of the... Uh, Investigators that were assigned to the task force from the state police, uh, Tiffany Atai, um, she was uh, really somebody that kind of moved the needle in, in the investigation. And uh, she knocked she, the wall down. <laughs> uh, yeah, pretty much knocked the wall down. Well, well said. But uh, we were able to now track this green avalanche to that little box in Massapequa Park. Uh, we re-interviewed uh, the individual who kind of gave us a better description of Rex Hewerman and saying pretty much he had bushy hair, these big glasses, yeah. and it was the size of an ogre. An and, ogre. And, and, that, and that really uh, helped us get this case going in, in the right direction. Was Rex ever on your radar prior to that very moment? And was he the only suspect that fit the profile of the serial killer? So we didn't have a profile of him. We just had uh, some bodies that were uh, discovered mm -hmm. uh, on Ocean Parkway. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So in regarding having an actual description, we didn't have that at the time. But was the, the vehicle something that we yeah. were aware of? Yes, that, that, that's, that's accurate. Know, Commissioner, when I spoke to you shortly after, you talked about that task force when you, after you took office. You said that you would use your experience in really navigating other departments, bringing that legacy to Suffolk County Police Department. So now you have the suspect's DNA, yeah. right? And will that be loaded into this database that so many organizations yeah. use to see if he's connected to other unsolved murders? Yeah, of course. You know, uh, you know one of the reasons why uh, we're successful in law enforcement is we're making sure that we use our, our science, our technology, uh, in order to uh, link perpetrated subjects to, to crime. Mm -hmm. So that's going to be something that... that we're including going to the do. NYPD. Including the mm -hmm. NYPD. You know, Commissioner, there are at least six other victims. Some of them are unidentified. Some of them were dismembered, mm -hmm. found along Ocean Parkway. Mm -hmm. And do you think that another killer might have done that, or do you think it's the same killer? Time will tell. Mm -hmm. uh, that's, uh, that's my response to that. Is We're, we're still trying to uh, see what else Rex might have been into, and uh, we still are going to keep the task force in place and, and, and work with our partners and continue to try to solve these other outstanding investigations. So let's talk about what's happening now, right? So he, of course, had his court arraignment on Friday, but now there's many pieces of evidence that you are gathering from his home in Massapequa Park, which we'll get to in just a second. But news this morning, Commissioner, is that there's a new location, mm -hmm. this Amityville storage locker that is being searched. Was that owned or rented by Rex, and what are you looking for there? Well, anything that he had a connection to, any type of storage facility, his residence, his place of work, we have to get search warrants and go through the property. Are there body parts or things that we need to take a look at? Are there trophies of some of the victims that uh, 
uh, unfortunately, that he stored in that location. So uh, we're going through there right now. That was on our radar. This is not a, a new developing uh, part of the investigation, uh, but we are going through it, and we're going to uh, see what it can link to to help us with the, uh, with the case. I think what's really disturbing that came out in court was that this suspect allegedly was going all over the Internet searching for information not only about his victims but about families. Yeah. He was also looking up child porn. Yeah. He was also looking up torture porn. And it seems like a real Mary. double life. Mary is a monster. He's a monster. And I'll, I'll say that with, with a level of conviction. And I'm just so proud of the men and women of the task force. We were able to get this monster off the streets. Mm -hmm. uh, Commissioner, I mean, um, in the neighbors in that neighborhood, obviously shocked that he was living among them this entire time in that red house that was uh, kind of stuck out like a sore thumb on that block. It did. Um, it, now that you have the investigators, we have this drone video from our Pix11 drone that captured the the men and women going into the home in their Tyvek suits, bringing out some of the evidence. Can you talk about what you were looking for inside the home at all? I know it's an ongoing investigation. It, it is an ongoing investigation, but uh, anything that could help us uh, connect him to maybe other crimes that may be on that Ocean Parkway or anywhere else we want to take a look at. But uh, uh, it's a very cluttered house. Uh, uh, it's looked like he was like a, like a pack rat with Clutter. a lot of different things in there. So a uh, uh, disturbing individual. Very I disturbing. think it what was also interesting, Dan, is that his wife was always out of town when these murders happened, mm -hmm. according to what's said in the indictment. Mm -hmm. What do you make of that? Well, and her uh, DNA right. was found on some of the victims, and it could have been transferred yeah. from his clothing. Well, I think uh, we, we stated before, he was living a double life, mm -hmm. you know, and he capitalized uh, on some of his horrible activities when she was out of town. But uh, uh, once again, we uh, uh, did a lot of great work. Yeah. Uh, it took us a while. Uh, this police department got scrutinized unfairly. I'll make sure that's very clear. Uh, but coming together, uh, we, we got the job done. And but. but we still got some more work to do. Yeah, Commissioner, just, I know we're out of time, but I just want to go back to the initial question, right? You said you moved in because of the of fear of leaks. Did you ever fear that any other women were in danger? Of course. You know, uh, that's another reason why we moved in. Regarding moving in that quickly on that, on that day, not necessarily. Uh, but we took a look at where we were, with, where we were with the investigation, and said, you know what, we gotta, we gotta move forward with the, with the case. Let's put it in the grand jury. Let's get an indictment, and let's get him off the streets. Mm -hmm. Suffolk County Police Commissioner Rodney Harrison, appreciate you, and all the work of the men and women in this department. And Mary.